It is a very special joy to have Brother Duke Jairaj as our speaker this morning. Brother Duke is very well known as a, is a very well known speaker and very popular among our youth life uh, folks. He has been involved in the youth ministry for the past 16 years, right from his high school days. He grew up in Velour and his parents were one of the founding members of the Bless, Blessing Youth Mission. Brother Duke did his MDiv at our Southern Asia Bible College and he graduated as the gold medalist in 2001. Prior to that, he did his B.Tech in Agricultural Engineering from the Allahabad University. After completing his MDiv, he served as a youth pastor in the Central Assembly of God Church in Delhi and along with teaching in their Bible college there. Later, he, went on, he and his wife went on to serve as missionaries in, uh, with the Blessing Youth Mission uh, for the next three years. Currently, he is serving as a youth evangelist at large. He is a great preacher and specially gifted in ministering to the youth. He travels frequently ministering in youth camps and conferences. He is also a very talented writer. He writes articles for, for different magazines. He also publishes a monthly youth magazine called The Days of Your Youth. Brother Duke is married to Sister Evangeline and they've been married for the past six years. And they have a three-year-old son, Dale Nathan. Since October 2005, they have been based in Hyderabad. And for the past one year, they have been part of our church. Currently, he works in HSBC uh, for two reasons. Number one, so he can support himself financially. Number two, he has access to the corporate youth. And he has a very good uh, ministry among there and a prayer fellowship in the HSBC. It's a joy to have him minister today at New Life Assembly. So I want you to open your hearts and give him a big welcome as he brings God's word today. Brother Duke Jairaj. The State Bank of India advertisement says, pure banking, nothing else. When I walk into this church Sunday after Sunday and listen to Pastor Stubbs preach, this is what I tell myself, pure Bible teaching, nothing else. I thank him even though he's not here. His Bible teaching ministry has got a great influence upon, me, upon my life. Some months back, my wife and I were at KFC and uh, I was about to pay some money and get Zynga, something, one of my favorites. And Pastor Wilson was there with his kids and and he wouldn't allow me to pray for that zinger and we had a good fellowship we talked about young people the youth ministry and we connected and uh, he was he was the one actually who put me to pastor Stubbs. i thank god for him i whenever he speaks i i'm at the edge of my seats listening and uh, i thank god for pastor eunice you know several years ago when i was in delhi uh, i just finished a brief assignment with the assemblies of god and uh, i had a phone call from my friend chaitanya pastor chaitanya who was my roommate at southern asia bible college and uh, Chaitanya told me that a, a person called Eunice would be calling me and he would invite me to speak at the Assembly of God Church, the young people here at Hyderabad. And our relationship began in 2002. And uh, when my wife and I decided to move to Hyderabad because the Lord was clearly leading us to, to, this, to this city, uh, you know, Eunice uh, made me stay in his room, drove me around, tried to find a house for me, a great buddy in the blood, I would say. So I thank God for this church and I thank God for the young people of this church, several of whom are active volunteers in the small ministry my wife and I do. So I thank God for each one of you. And before we go into God's word, would you bow your heads with me and shall we pray? Quieten your hearts, clear your thoughts. God's got a message for you this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Even this morning, Lord, as I lead your people to your word, I stand as a helpless man. Helpless, but for the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I count on you, O Lord. Lord, I pray, even as I make your word relevant for this generation which procrastinates, which postpones things, I pray that you will help me. Give me a spirit beyond measure so that I can make this relevant and hard-hitting. Give me grace. I, am, I imagine myself sitting in the audience even as I speak this message because this message is relevant to me as well the preacher speak to each one of us in jesus christ name i pray amen two batsmen with over twenty-five thousand international runs between them were 
in the middle. It was a World Cup game, World Cup 2007 in the West Indies. Ganguly managed 19 runs. The partnership managed only 19 runs and 51 deliveries. Tendulkar's contribution was 7 of 26 balls. Ganguly's was 8 of 25 balls. After Bangladesh bowled 150 legitimate deliveries, 25 overs, you know, India had only managed 28 singles, or in effect, there were 119 dot balls out of the 150 balls bowled. I don't know, I, I was not there, I was, I was not there in the pitch that day when this match was being played. But I guess Ganguly and Tendulkar thought, after all, it's Bangladesh, Chota Bachas. We can take care of these guys if I, we put the axle, if we, put the, if, we, if we press the accelerator button after the 40th over, we can sail over 280 or 290 and we'll be through with this World Cup game. But they were wrong. Tendulkar and Ganguly procrastinated and that cost India dear in that World Cup game. India lost that match, then lost the next game with Sri Lanka and that loss against Bangladesh hurt them so deeply and they were out of the World Cup. Procrastination or postponing things cost India the World Cup. You know, it's happening all the time, it's happening all the day, every, every day. Now we tell ourselves, tomorrow I will do it, not today tomorrow it, whether it's coming whether it's a small thing like washing vessels in the kitchen or washing your blood washing your sins in the blood of Jesus Christ we like to procrastinate not today tomorrow not today tomorrow but you know what the word of God says on this subject the word of God says in Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 21 that we must not procrastinate God hates this habit that we have in our lives of postponing things. He hates it. It's, he's, the Word of God says that in Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 21, if you make a vow to the Lord, you shall not delay in fulfilling it. For the Lord your God will surely require it of you and you will be guilty of sin. Not to procrastinate is not a suggestion by God. He calls it sin. It's very serious. It's very serious. Some great minds have made several statements about procrastination. Somebody said, procrastination is the bad habit of putting off until the day after tomorrow what should have been done the day before yesterday. Procrastination is like a credit card, a smart man said. It's a lot of fun until you get the bill. Procrastination is, hands down, our favorite form of self-sabotage, said another man. Procrastination is the grave in which opportunity is buried, said another man. Now this morning, I want to take you to 10 areas in our day-to-day -day lives in which the Bible clearly tells us we should not procrastinate, we should not postpone things. First, the procrastination of salvation. My Bible says in Genesis chapter 19 and verse 22, Escape there quickly, said the angels to Lot, for I can do nothing till you arrive there. Escape, Lord, escape. In other words, run, run from the sinful city. Sodom and Gomorrah was popular for the sin of homosexuality, as popular as, as Tirupati is for Ladus. Sodom and Gomorrah was popular for the sin of homosexuality. It was a sin city. And God told Lord, He didn't say go away from the city, He used the word escape. That speaks of the urgency, the urgency of running away from sin. You know, Lot went in one direction, but Mrs. Lot was dragging her feet. She wanted to have one last look at that sin city. I, if I could get into the mind of Mrs. Lot, I think she probably thought, we have lots of time. Mrs. Lot thought she had lots of time. Lots of time to run away from sin. Lots of time to get saved. And I do not know, there were some, some things in, in the city that she wanted to have a look at. Maybe it was a fridge, or maybe it was a washing machine, or maybe it was her television serials, I do not know what. But she was hanging to wanting to have one last look at that city. And she became a pillar of salt. And Jesus, in Luke chapter 17, verse 32, preached a short message. One of the shortest sermons that Jesus preached. And she was the heroine of that message. And Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. 
And when Jesus said, remember Lot's wife, he was reminding you and I that we don't have too much time to get saved because the Bible says, now is the time of salvation. Today is God's accepted time. I meet young people, not just young people, even middle-aged folks who say, I'll get serious with Jesus after 15 years. I'll get serious with Jesus when I hit retirement. I'll get serious with the things of God. But not now. Right now, I'm too busy with my career. Right now, I'm too busy with my kids. Right now, I'm busy chasing the pleasures of the world. You're wrong, my friend. My Bible is very clear. Now is the time of salvation. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter 2, verse 12, kiss the son before it's too late. Kiss the son before he can kill you. Do it now. Don't delay it. Come now. Let's say, settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I'll make them as white as snow. Some of us don't come to the Lord because we think, Oh, I'm too unholy to come to this holy Jesus. Just because, that's the very reason you need to come to Jesus. Because only if you come to Jesus, though your sins are like scarlet, he will make it as white as snow. He says, come now, Isaiah 118, come now. Tomorrow may be too late. Tomorrow may be too late. You know, when a, when a newly wed, wedded couple, they get married, one of the things that they look for, even before they get married, in fact, the first night together, and the book of Joel talks about a bridegroom and a bride who get married. And there in the book, in Joel chapter 2, verse 16, Joel 2, 16, you know, the word of God says, let the bridegroom leave its room. That's unintentional poetry in the Bible, in the English Standard Version. Let the bridegroom leave its room. Leave its room. Why? More important than your first night is your, is your, is your you need to check whether you're getting, you're right with God. You need to check whether you're saved, whether you're born again. It's very urgent. It's very urgent. Come down from the tree, Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, hurry down. Zacchaeus is up the tree. And Jesus said, today I want to come into your home. Jesus says to you, today, not tomorrow, not, at, not, at, not after one hour. Today, right now, I want to come to your home, Zacchaeus. I don't care what your life is. I don't care what your background is. I don't care uh, what your looks are. You may not be the smart looking guy. You may not be tall, dark, and handsome. You may be a short guy. People may ridicule you. But still, I want to come to your home. I need to do it today. Hurry, Zacchaeus. Come down. Don't procrastinate salvation. Secondly, the procrastination of immersion. Now, many people who are saved postpone their immersion baptism because of the pull of church tradition. I thank God for the traditional church. Without the traditional church, I wouldn't be having the Bible. I'm not, my aim is not to bash them this morning. But I want to tell you something. Well, listen to the truth of what God's word says. God's word said, no, Ananias told, the, told Saul, who was converted, and he asked him, the, one of the first questions that Ananias asked Saul, in Acts chapter 22, verse 16. And now, why do you wait? Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. Why do you wait to get immersed in water? Why, do you get, why, do you, why are you waiting? Now that you've accepted Christ, now that you've taken a U-turn, now that Jesus is your Savior, why do you wait to get baptized? God is asking you this question this morning. Why, do you get, why, do you, why are you waiting to get immersed and be baptized? Now, some, uh, some Bible scholars have observed whenever people without any pull of church doctrine have read the Bible, I'm talking about first, first century Christian, I mean, first generation Christians, when, a, when the Bible went before the missionary did and they read the Bible, they accepted Jesus, all of them have practiced immersion baptism because that is what it is. When you read the Bible as it is and, and take the implications, that's what it is. The Bible talks about no, no other baptism. Do you, are you procrastinating your immersion? Thirdly, the procrastination or the postponement of meditation. This, this beautiful lady was sleeping. And uh, when she was sleeping, when she was snoring, and that's when she heard a knock on the door. And she said, why should I get up? Why, I, I don't want to get up now and put on my clothes and walk up to the door and open the door. And oh, uh, I'd rather sleep. This, this blanket keeps me warm and I don't want to do that. 
at the door and then she suddenly realizes this is a story from song of songs chapter 5 verses 2 to 8 i'm putting it in the modern context now then suddenly she realizes it is my man at the door my man the man i'm going to marry he's waiting for me at the door and you know what she finally gets up from bed and walks up to the door and opens the door her man was gone a dream man went riding away in a horse i believe how she cries out how wise gets horse but the horse man went It was too late. Every day, God wants to speak to you. He wants to fellowship with you, and that fellowship will be centered around the Way Bible, which is the written Word of God. It is in this book you and I, you and Jesus, can meet on a daily basis. He wants to talk with you. He wants to communicate with you. Talk in everlasting words and dedicate them all to me. Wrote a popular boy band. God says, "I have talked in everlasting words. I have written them in black and white. I have given them to you. They are for you to read every day. In this Bible, there is a Rama word for you, a word for your life." situation for that day how many of you say well lord i am too sleepy i don't want to get out of my bed let me snore you do not know my hectic call center life schedule i can't get out of bed and i can't make my way to my dressing table where my bible is in fact the bible is a mirror so the bible should be in your dressing table so that you remind yourself whether which mirror you spend more time in the real mirror or the spiritual mirror that's beside the point okay and lord every day god is waiting to speak to you to communicate with you through the word of god and we miss it because we procrastinate our bible meditation because of sheer laziness he wants to speak to you the procrastination of meditation then fourthly i speak about the procrastination of reconciliation Several movies have been made recent times about the Sermon on the Mount and the more you study the Sermon on the Mount more messages that you we get for our lifetime Jesus said you know he he said in Matthew chapter 5 verse 25 he said come to terms quickly with your accuser when you are going with him to court let your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you put in prison in other words Jesus was saying let your reconciliation be quick don't drag your feet and Jesus practiced it while well, he was hanging on the cross there were people who were making fun of him they laughed at him they lampooned him they lambasted him they 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 made fun of him but Jesus said when he was hanging on the cross father forgive them for they do not know what they do he didn't say i'll do that after resurrection he didn't say i'll do that after ascension he did it right when he was hanging on the cross few minutes after the event took place some of us say well i will forgive that person but i need my time to smart over this i need time i can't forgive right now but jesus did it and that's why the bible said in colossians chapter 3 verse 13 in the contemporary version in colossians 3 13 forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you are you still smarting over the remark your mother in law made on the day of your wedding even though you have celebrated your 10th anniversary of wedding are you still smarting over what your teenage boy told you on the day of anger in a moment of anger he said something to you and you're still thinking about it or are you teenage son thinking about what your daddy told you in anger several years ago are you still smarting about it the bible says forgive quickly and completely as far as the master forgave you do not procrastinate your reconciliation don't procrastinate fifthly the procrastination of practical holiness the possession of practical holiness this is moses's farewell speech and moses says in deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 3 know therefore today that he who goes before you as a consuming fire is the lord your god he will destroy them and subdue them before you so you shall drive them out and make them perish quickly as the lord has promised you in other words moses is saying the promised land is before you you guys need to go get it and you need to get it quick don't drag your feet when it comes to possessing the promised land that god has for you what is what is god's promised us god has promised us a holy life the moment we become believers at that moment what theologians call as instant sanctification happens right at that moment when you believe jesus christ even though you may be the dirtiest of sinners at that moment because of what the precious blood of jesus has done in your heart you become a holy person but at the same time what there is some the bible also talks about practical day to day holiness which is what we need to possess 
on a day-to-day basis by see being severe and strict on sin. Now, there are some sins that are grown with us even as we have grown as believers. You know, anger. We think it's a fashion to get, get angry even though we are walking with the Lord for many years. Well, I need to get angry. Said, no, you need to deal with your anger. We, we live with lust long after we have made our commitment to Jesus Christ. It's something that's happening on a day-to-day basis. No, you need to deal with it. That means you don't have to walk into that internet center with a closed cabin door. You need to take some practical steps. You need to have some, you need to be accountable to a friend and keep con- having short accountability, you know, uh, com- uh, confession time with that friend so that he will keep checking you on all the areas you're constantly tripping. What are the efforts that we have taken to actually possess holiness? Or do we say, okay, every Sunday I come to church, I confess my sins, I do that well, every six months in the youth camp or in, the, in, in, that youth, in that retreat, once in two months I'll confess my sin. Now, do we take a possession of practical holiness so lightly? No, we can't pro- procrastinate. Now is the time to possess the land. I like David. I like the Sunday. I, I can never forget the Sunday school story of 1 Samuel chapter 17. Jumping out of 1 Samuel chapter 17. And the Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 28, 48, when the Philistine arose and came near, Dave, came near to meet David, the Bible says, David ran quickly. I like that. David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. There are some Goliaths in your soul. The Goliath of lust, the Goliath of pride, the Goliath Goliath of arrogance, the Goliath of fear in your heart. All these things are, God hates it. And do you take time to deal with your Goliaths right inside you? The enemy is not surrounding us. The enemy is inside us. The Goliaths are inside us. Do we take time and effort to be holy? As the old Methodist hymn said, take time to be holy. Sixthly, the procrastination of intercession. First, there was grumbling and then there was the rumbling. They grumbled against the leader of the team. God appointed leader of the team and then there was a rumbling, which means the earth opened up and they went in. There was an earthquake, but still there was no humbling. People didn't humble their hearts. You know what God said? I'm going to send a plague to these people. And the Bible says... And in fact, Moses said to Aaron, Moses received the word from God and he said this to Aaron. He said, take your censer, put fire on it off the altar, lay incense on it and carry it quickly to the congregation and make atonement for them for the wrath has gone out from the Lord. The plague has begun. Numbers 16, 46. Take, you know, throughout the Bible, especially in the book of Revelation, Incense of the altar. Incense is always a picture of intercession. Oh, how, how often our prayers are so selfish. How often we only pray for ourselves. How many of us take time to kneel in the presence of God and say, Lord, oh God, Lord, let the Google generation be grabbed from Gehenna. Gehenna in hell means, Gehenna in Greek means hell. Oh Lord, let the youth, let the young people in Dell be plundered from hell. I pray, Lord, let the BC youth in HSBC the before Christ youth, the BC youth in HSBC, let them know you, Lord, through my life, through my words in the office, let them know you. How many of us pray? How many of us pray for India? India, this great nation, in this nation where 65,000 people visit Tripadi every day, this nation where 50,000 people sink themselves in the muddy waters of the Ganges, thinking a sink in the muddy waters of Ganges will save them from their sins. How many of us pray for India? We pray for indica we pray for do we pray for india and he said ask of me i'll give nations as your inheritance and the ends of the earth as your possession and all we want to possess is a mercedes benz procrastination procrastination next in the show of determination in the workplace i want to talk about electric eliezer his master gave him a task his task was Go to that faraway place, 400 miles from his place, Bible scholars tell us, and get a girl for my son, Isaac. And this guy goes on his journey, and 400 miles, long way. At least he can take, he can take a lodge and sleep for two, two, three days, but this guy won't do that. And then he found the girl. At least after he finishes his task, he can take some rest. He won't do that. You know what he said? They were about to prepare, you know, this, uh, this girl's family was preparing Hyderabadi biryani for him. And you know what he said? Do not delay me. 
do not delay me in genesis chapter 24 verse 56 do not delay me since the lord has prospered my way send me away that i may go to my master don't delay me i must complete the work of the my master has given me and report back to him when my master thinks about eliezer he must think if i give my job to eliezer it will be done without delay can your master say this about you can your team leader in your corporate company say this about you can your boss say this about you? Or do you procrastinate when it comes to carrying out the responsibilities that you need to carry out? Do you show sweat and skill in your work? Do you put effort as well as excellence in your work? Eighthly, the procrastination of marriage union. The saying is true, you know, marry in haste and repent at leisure. But sometimes some young people wait too much to get married. In fact, you should get married to a believer. Pastor Walson put it so eloquently. We must put it, we must marry a believer. And we must marry a person with, uh, with the same goal as we have. Raja goal, because our Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, can two walk together unless they are two agreed? That's what, what brought my wife and I together. But I'm talking about people who are looking for a perfect partner. They're searching and searching and searching and searching. They're browsing and browsing. They're going here and there looking for the perfect partner. You can search all you want. You'll never find a person who's perfect because there is no perfect person on this earth for your information. And uh, the other day I read a verse in the Bible and that made me think. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1. It talks about seven men, seven women who take hold of one man in that day saying, we will eat our own bread and wear our own clothes. Only let us be called by your name and take away a reproach. You know, these seven women, you know, if you read the context, that is Isaiah chapter 3, they were proud people. They had, an, they had a proud look, which means, I may be wrong, my, my, my interpretation may be assassination of scripture, but I do not know. It, I may be right as well. You know, these proud women thought, ah, I can live my life without a man. Oh, I don't want any man in my life. And then they got, grew older, their skin started wrinkling, the bodies got shapeless. There came a time when no man wanted to marry them. And they're begging seven, seven women, beg, beg one man to marry them. They say, don't even give us food. Just let us be known as Mrs. So-and-so. Just give us your name. Why? Needless delay. When God gave you the person, God gave you a person in front of your eyes, you bypass that person because you're looking for the perfect partner. And there are some men who postpone their marriage because they're looking for weekends, not wives. One new girl every weekend, but not, not a wife. No commitment. There are some, several commitment shy young people. No, God is against procrastination of the marriage union. And then there's also... One more thing that we need to, uh, we need to uh, understand here. In Song of Solomon chapter 7, we read about the girl who tells the guy, Come, my beloved, let us go out to the fields, lodge there in the villages. Let us go out early to the vineyards. And there I will give you my love. I'm cutting it short. Proverbs, Song of Solomon 7 verse 12. The girl is telling the guy, they got married, and then, uh, again, I'm, I'm using my imagination to interpret this and make this relevant. The girl tells the guy, let us get up early and go to the vineyards before mother-in-law gets up. I want to spend some time with you, man. When before my marriage, you were running behind me. But now after we have got married, I need to chase you. You don't spend time. Many of us procrastinate when it comes to executing basic marriage responsibilities of spending time with spouse and children. We think, well, now is the time for me to ascend the corporate ladder and we blow this. It is wrong. God's word says no. And that was one of the regrets of a great man like Billy Graham who was an example in every way. He said, there's one thing which I'll always regret. He preached in New York for 16 weeks every evening. He had a great international ministry. But you know what he said? He has the graciousness to say it in his autobiography, just as I am. Although I have much to be grateful for, as I look over my life, I have many regrets. I have failed many times. I will do many things differently. For one thing, I will speak less and study more. I will spend more time with my family. Every day I was absent from my home, from my family is gone forever. I read that again. Every day I was absent from my family is gone forever. Although much of that travel, although much of that travel was necessary, some of that travel was not. He says in his autobiography, just as I am. My wife is there and she will take me into account for what I preached this morning. So I'm preaching to myself. Not just getting married, 
but also fulfilling basic responsibilities of marriage. Don't procrastinate it. Don't think, you know, when you're old, you'll make a phone call like Amitabh Bachchan did to, you know, to his wife in the movie Bagman. Don't think you can do that when you're old. You can do it now. You can do it now. And I come to the final point, the procrastination of evangelization. The Bible talks about lazy Levites. A king gathered the priests, the king of Israel gathered the priests, and the Levites said to and the Levites, and he said to the Levites, Go out to the cities of Judah and gather all Israel, gather from all Israel money to repair the house of your God from year to year, and see that you act quickly. But you know what the word of God says in Second Chronicles chapter 24 and verse 5? The Levites did not act quickly. He says, go to the cities, get some work organized, get some funds organized for the rebuilding of the broken temple of Jerusalem. But the Levites did not act quickly. Even today, God says, my church needs a revival. My church needs a restoration. We, my church is full of people who want to just warm the pews and go back home. All they do in their career life is increase the temperature of the seat of the church. They don't get involved. They want to be spectators. They're not willing to be soldiers. No, I don't speak of this church in particular. But I don't speak of this church. I speak of the church of Jesus in general. Why? We have far too spectators. People who don't got, want to get involved. But God's plan for us is not that we be spectators. God's plan is that we be soldiers. We get involved. Take that Sunday school. Do that LCD work. No, ministry is not just preaching. There are, you know, there are, I, love, I love preaching, but there are other things I don't want to do for the Lord. I give tracts not far away from my office, the city center. I escape there during my break times and give tracts to three or four people. I was there in Hyderabad Airport the other day, taking a flight to go to Chennai to preach in a meeting in Tiruchi. No, there, you know, I saw Harsha Bogle, the ace commentator of Star Cricket, and I walked up to him with my magazine, Days of Your Youth, which has got con gospel in contemporary context in every issue. I walked up to him, exchanged a few pleasantries, and I gave him the gospel through that magazine. Now, I want to do everything as long as I am alive. Somehow save some. As Paul said, what is it that you can do for the Lord? Are you dragging your feet like the Levites? Don't do it. Get involved now. Don't procrastinate. Because my Jesus said, as long as it is day, I must do the work of him who sent me. For night is coming when no man can work. When no man can work. Paul got aggressive with Agrippa. The Bible says, Agrippa, after his time with Paul, the great political leader in Acts chapter 26 verse 28 says, Agrippa said to Paul, in a short time do you persuade me to be a Christian? It is as if a boy met a girl. It was a blind date. And in the first date, the boy pops the question to the girl, can you marry me? The girl thinks, hey, this is all happening so fast. Why is he proposing to me so quickly? Something similar is happening here. Paul just met Agrippa. It was just for one time. And Agrippa, you know, and Paul somehow through the conversation wants to push the gospel. And Agrippa says in defense, in a short time, you're trying to push the gospel to me? You want to make me a Christian? Paul had the urgency of the gospel. He said, oh, unto me, if I don't preach the gospel, it's that same urgency in your shoes. And if the urgency is there in your shoes, then your feet is beautiful feet, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Would you close your eyes? God's word has come to you directly today. You and I are guilty of the sin of procrastination. It could be procrastination of salvation or procrastination of evangelization. I do not know, but you know. And you need to repent. You say, Lord, if you say, Lord, I'm so sorry for my sin of procrastination. Please forgive me. Your word has come to me directly. Will you say sorry to him right now where you are? Think of that area and say sorry. And, and I want to tell you, church, don't procrastinate your taking care of procrastination. Don't procrastinate your taking care of procrastination. Do it now. Don't delay this. Because who knows, tomorrow you'll never be alive. I will never be alive. Who knows whether I'll be alive to preach in the third service. Who knows? No, I do not know. Now is the time. Now is the time. Today is God's day. Don't do it tomorrow. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He will not keep on speaking to you forever. Genesis 6, 3 says, He will speak to you and if you don't listen, He will leave you beyond a point. Now is the time to listen to that tender voice speaking to you. Will you say, if God is speaking to you and you are sitting right some area of your life in which you are procrastinating, I want you to slip up your hand. Don't be ashamed. I want you to slip up your hand. Yes, I see some hands. Yes, 
is god speaking to you about some area in your life it could be about your marriage union it could be about your bible meditation it could be about your salvation it could be about your evangelization it could be about reconciliation you have not forgiven that person you are setting a world record of not speaking to a person for so many days you want to repent right now show up your hands anybody else and i want to invite pastor walson to pray for each one of us even as we make this commitment that we are going to deal with the sin of procrastination in our life thank you so much for sharing that word what a timely word that has come to us from the holy spirit and i wanted to ask you know is that something that you're struggling with postponing things i know there are times i postpone things and i struggle with it because things pile up and then we focus on one meeting after another and things pile up but do you struggle with that i believe god spoke to me yes i want to ask you you may put your hands down is there someone here that says yes i i i have not given my heart to jesus christ i have not been born again because i'm waiting for the right time i want to be really cleaned up i want to be holy i want to get older i want to make lot of money i want to get married i want to do everything i want then i will give my heart or maybe let him give me a job let him bless me with this then i will friends a lot of people that want to accept christ at the 11th hour somebody said they die at 10:30 you wait till the 11th hour but the 11th hour is not written in your mind i want to ask you don't wait until you get all perfect all holy all well all accomplished for you to give your heart this morning the holy spirit asking you can you give me your heart and your life today is there anyone that says yes i want to give my heart to him this morning i waited i delayed but this morning yes sister You may close your eyes as I say make this call is there anyone that says I want to give my heart to Jesus today I've delayed so long but I will not delay any further Yes sister thank you Yes anyone else thank you sister anyone else thank you Anyone else Anyone else Anyone else in the overflow area that says yes I will not procrastinate deciding for Christ because today if I die I do not want to be in hell The Bible says there is no other name given under heaven whereby men can be saved. There is no other way to heaven. No religion can get us there except this one man, Jesus Christ. And friends, if you've not given your heart, this is your time. Thank you, sister. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, thank you. Shall we stand? Yes, thank you, sister. I saw a few. Let's stand, please. those who lifted your hands i request you to keep your right hands lifted high we are going to give our heart to him today you're making the most the, the greatest decision that you will ever make in your life if you have raised your hands before raise your hands to accept christ as your savior and let's pray father father i will not procrastinate i will not procrastinate today i give you my heart today i give you i give you my life I accept you Jesus as my savior and lord. I accept you Jesus as my savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Be my savior. Be my savior. Be my god. Be my god. I promise to serve you. I promise to the rest of my life. The rest of my life. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you're generally struggling with procrastination, whether it's sharing the gospel or any other area, I want you to lift your hands and let's pray together. Father I pray for these hands that are lifted high. Father help us to do today what needs to be done. Help us oh God to do so we will not delay like the Levites. They heard your voice but they did not obey. Father help us oh God to obey. Speak to us. Help us to be a blessing to someone in our workplace, in our neighborhood, among our friends and our colleagues and Father we pray that we will not hesitate or procrastinate sharing about you oh God. We ask your blessing upon each one of us as we go to our home. Grant us a wonderful week, a God-centered, a a a a a a a a week that is filled with the presence of God. Bless each one of us, our homes and our families. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.